Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the third video in putting a Way 3D into Flash Builder. And last time we built an ActionScript package. You can see the application over here. And we brought that ActionScript uh, from a Way 3D's uh, interactive example into Flash Builder. But what we're going to do, but what we want to do now is actually not use an ActionScript package, but use a Flex project, and to bring that script into Flex. And in order to do that, we have to start understanding how classes are built and how to work with classes. We're going to essentially go the reverse direction. I'll just make this point very clearly. This is not really the direction we ultimately want to go. We actually want to go the other way. We actually take uh, properties and functions and variables and we encapsulate them. We put them in classes. We kind of hide them away and we can actually uh, use those classes interchangeably with other projects. But for this example, we're actually going to go uh, the opposite way where we take a class and in a sense we de-encapsulate it. I mean, we, we pull out its guts and we put it in a Flash Builder. And then we use that design interface to actually work with it. So what you need to do, make sure you go and review two videos real quick here. I want you to review Getting Started with Classes Part 1. And here's the YouTube address. Make sure you take a look at that. And also review Getting Started with Classes Part 2 on YouTube. And here's a YouTube video for that as well. I will not try to pronounce those URLs. There's just a lot of letters there. So just grab that from the screen. Go to my YouTube and watch those two videos. And you'll understand the structure of classes pretty well. I just want to say something, too, that many times when we talk about functions, in classes, functions are called methods. And we talk about properties. And in class, variables are called properties. So just keep that in mind. And sometimes I make a mistake. I use them interchangeably. I'll be working with basically action script. I'll call something a method or a property when it actually should be called a function or a variable. And when I work in classes, sometimes I'll call a method a function or a uh, property or variable. So I make that mistake because I'm going back and forth. So ultimately what Flash Builder will do is compile all this into classes anyway. So I know that. And so I have a tendency to call them methods and just use those terms inter interchangeably. So forgive me when I do that. So let's go get started. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to take this class package that we've put into Flash Builder. Let me bring up the program real quick and convert it into ActionScript that can be used in Flash Builder. So let's go to the project real quick, talk about it, and then outline the steps that we're going to go through. Uh, I'm on MyAway 3D Interaction right here. And I'm in my way 3D interaction. If you remember what I did last time, is I went ahead and pasted the class that I'm in a sense going to decapsulate, going to put into that in between that C data tags in Flash Builder. And here it is right here. And you'll see immediately I already got an error. I mean, Flash Builder is complaining because it doesn't want to see a package in its C data tag. So if you're wondering why did I do that, well, we're going to actually now kind of decapsulate it, go the opposite direction of what you normally go. I'm going to go kind of fast, and I'll give you the code uh, in a download so you can actually play with it. But what I want to get here is not necessarily all the steps, but how I'm doing this. Because one of the purposes of the book was to teach you how to hack paper vision. People work with paper vision and they get to a point where they hit the wall. When you hit that wall, you need to go in and hack it and change it. And that's one of the emphasis of the book. So now let's outline what we're going to do and how we're going to change this, in a sense, to decapsulate it so it can run in those C data tags. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, rip off the package and curly brackets and they're going to remove the constructor function. So let me explain why we're going to do that. What I'm looking at right here is just basically some uh, stub code for a typical class. And so you have this package right here that uh, surrounds a class, and that won't run in ActionScript, so we're going to remove that. The next thing you have is uh, the import statement, which we're going to keep. And then you have uh, the class statement, which you have to also remove, so that's yet another bracket we need to remove. And you have one more thing, and that's the constructor function. So what the constructor function does is when the class is, in a sense, instantiated, anything in that constructor function runs first. So if you build an entire program in a class, you put your starting method in that constructor function, and it talks to all the methods and functions below. So you don't see any here, but you'd actually put some more methods and functions that would be used in that class. Now, there's two types of classes out there. Sometimes classes do have constructor functions, and sometimes they don't. And so when they don't, they're just used basically to store methods and properties. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to go in and rip off that constructor function right here, get rid of it. But when we do that, we actually still need to initiate our program. So we'll use creation and complete to do that. So we're going to remove the constructor function. And then we have to add a Spark sprite holder. And uh, why is that? Because we're actually not working in uh, the typical uh, 
Flex 2 or Flash environment, we can use Add Child. We're actually now with the new Flash Builder, we have what's, we have what's called a Spark architecture. So we need to actually be able to add those classes no longer to the stage like we did in Flash, but actually to the Spark system itself. We're going to have to fix some of the Add Child problems. We'll do that. We'll remove the signature reference. It's just kind of in the way. We're going to add the system manager to to take place of the stage. So in Flash, you can add to the stage. In Flash, we're going to use System Manager to replace that. Now, uh, there's another way to do this too that we'll learn later on this chapter review, and uh, but we won't get to it yet. And finally, we'll just clean up any errors that we have, and I'll give you the code to download. I just want to make one big point here. I kind of have it highlighted here. Let me get off of that. Beware of the frame rate bug. Flash Builder typically runs at 24 frames a second. But you can go into the application tag and use frame rate and change that. But in this particular application, it really makes it buggy. And it actually freezes when you try to resize the, uh, the application size. So be aware of that. Uh, seems to be a little bug there. And so we're going to just re leave it at 24 frames a second. Now you've knocked off some performance there, of course. But don't worry. You'll get that back in building interactive in interfaces. So let's go ahead and go for it and uh, see how far we get. So I'm in Flash Builder right now, and I've got that uh, package pasted in my CData tags. The first thing I want to do is remove the package statement. So I'll just highlight that and just hit the delete button or backspace. It's gone, but I've removed one curly bracket, so I have to go down at the bottom of the application and remove the other curly bracket. So let's scroll down to the very bottom and remove that one. So that's gone. Now next we need to remove the class statement. So we have all the imports. That's bringing in basically all of the... Uh, important uh, away 3D light uh, classes and some flash classes as well that we'll need to run the program. Uh, we can get rid of this uh, SWF meta tag. We don't need that. And we want to get rid of this class statement. But we've taken away one of our curly brackets so we need to go all the way down to the bottom and we need to get rid of another curly bracket. Now we're good with getting rid of curly brackets because everything now is in terms of functions and you see all you, as you scroll up you see your different functions so we're doing pretty good there. And there won't have to be many changes there, so we're in good shape. All right. Uh, once again, we don't need the signature anymore, so we're going to eliminate anything that has to do with signature because uh, basically that's just a logo that was on the front of the application. We don't need that logo anymore. So I can just actually delete that. But another thing I could do is actually just start, in a sense, commenting, commenting things out. And sometimes when you're working with code and you're hacking, it's more useful, in a sense, to comment out because you can go back and fix things if you made a mistake. And I can use my control F trick now, just hit control F, and there's signature, and I can just hit find. And whenever I find that signature word, I can come along here and just start commenting things out. One thing, if you want to comment on an entire block, you can just right click on it and go toggle. So I'm look for my toggle, go roll over source, hit toggle comment, and that'll give you the slash star, star slash convention, which allows you to uh, comment out a block of code. Okay, once again, I can go my find trick and just look for more signature stuff. And here's a whole segment of signatures that I just don't need. And stage quality, I can set to low or high, but I want to do that right now. Uh, typically, we'll talk about what that means to set stage quality. So, so let's come along here and just get rid of all these signature uh, things. And let's uh, go ahead and uh, comment that out. And let's go and see if there's any more signatures that we're going to find. And yet here's another signature, so we want to get rid of that. So I'll just have a double slash to comment that out. Let's look for find. And there's and no more signature in the program, so I've taken care of that piece. I've eliminated my signature. Great. Now you can see there's a little error here. I just want to click on that and go to where that error is. And uh, it seems like things are starting to move along very rapidly for me here. So pretty good. What I want to do is save. And when I save, actually what will happen is the program itself will error check. Now next what I want to do is take a look at the program a little bit. So I actually told you, here's the import statements. Here's all the private statements, originally properties, and you can see, uh, uh, let me just highlight that for you. You can keep all of these, and everything's in the right format as well. So here's all your properties, and we won't go through and explain those bit by bit, but we'll explain what we need as we need it. So everything's good there. You see there's an error right here, and this is on the move. Uh, Boolean. Actually, that is not an error at all. Basically, what that's happening here, that's actually covering up some errors. And uh, that move statement basically clicks, tells you if you're clicking or not and if you should actually move the scene or not. So we don't need to do anything to that. We actually need to go down to fix some other problems. And we'll continue with this next time.